uh, maybe if Frank hasn't joined, then we'll uh, maybe wait. Um, so it's one o'clock p.m. I'm calling the June 21st, 20, 2022 meeting of the Albemarle County Architecture Review Board to order. This meeting is being held pursuant to and in compliance with ordinance number 20-A-16, an ordinance to ensure the continuity of government during the COVID-19 disaster. A quorum is present. Architecture Review Board members present electronically are Frank Hancock, Dave Vanderwerf, Tara Matsuno, myself, Chris Hankson, and uh, we're expecting Frank Stoner. Um, the opportunities for the public to access and participate in the electronic meeting are posted on the Albemarle County website at the Albemarle County calendar. The public has real-time audiovisual access to this meeting over Zoom and real-time <clears throat> audio access over telephone. Both is provided in the lawfully posted meeting notice. This meeting is being recorded and will be made available on the county's website. This online meeting is a public record and subject to disclosure under the Freedom of Information Act. <clears throat> All speakers, when it is your turn to speak, please first state your name for the record. Everyone who is participating today, it is good practice to mute your microphone until it is your turn to speak. Applicants who are making presentations, note that your presentation is limited to a total of 15 minutes, which you can divide among your team members. Carolyn will let us know when the 15 minutes are up. Do any ARB members have anything to disclose? No. All right. Are there uh, any members of the public that want to make a comment about a project that is not on the agenda? There is none at this time. All right, great. So uh, there are no consent agenda items today or uh, regular review items. There are uh, two work sessions today. The first topic is the countywide certificate of appropriateness criteria for structures located 750 feet or more from the EC. The presentation will be made by Margaret Malashevsky. Uh, Margaret, are you ready? Yes, I am going to share my screen. I'm happy I'm going to Nothing's responding. Please give me a minute. everyone still there not sure what just happened let's try this again looking better okay are you able to see my there you screen? go yeah thanks everything just completely froze for a while sorry about that but looks like we're back now Okay, so um, for this item, just gonna start with a little bit of background. And um, uh, in 2010, um, our zoning ordinance was revised to allow certain uh, types of entrance quarter applications to be reviewed by staff without a full review by the ARB in a meeting. And so there are two entrance quarter review types that we have. One is review by the ARB and the other is the staff level review. And those staff level reviews 
are <clears throat> called countywide certificates of appropriateness. And um, they are the types of proposals that are smaller in scale and typically have less visual impact. Um, and one of the staff level review options is for structures located 750 feet or more from an entrance corridor street. Um, each of the countywide certificates has a list of design criteria that um, must be met for that particular proposal to be approved. And among the criteria for structures located 750 feet or more from the entrance quarter is one about color. And that criterion calls for materials to be in earth tones. And it says that the use of bright white is limited to trim and decorative elements. And there have been some developments in which light or bright shades of white were not approved by the ARB. And in those cases, um, at least some of those cases, the buildings were proposed um, uh, were described as having minimal visibility and um, had wooded buffers. And so it was determined that more muted colors were needed to, for the buildings to blend with the buffer. So we're currently reviewing a proposal now um, for this type of countywide certificate. And white is proposed as a primary wall color, um, not just for trim. Um, but these buildings uh, have a different relationship to the street than the, what, what I just described. They're further away. Um, and they aren't being presented as um, um, being as needing to blend with a wooded screen. Um, so we have that issue. And then we also have the issue that these criteria don't define what bright white is. So we have a few questions for you today. A few have, questions have come up. We're looking for some direction. Um, we're wondering if we should be applying this particular criteria in the, in the cases like this, where the goal isn't necessarily to minimize visibility of the buildings. Um, and then do we want to define what bright white is? If the answer to that is yes, um, there are some systems available for that, uh, like reflectance value or the RGB color codes or red, green, and blue color codes are two that we often see referenced when we're um, looking into colors. Um, and then um, do we want to update the criteria for this particular uh, review type? So we appreciate getting your input on that. Um, I can show you some detail on the particular proposal that we're reviewing at staff level if you're um, interested in that. Um, just uh, I think I'll stop here and let, ask you what your preference is for um, discussing and moving forward. Right. But deferring yeah. to others, I think it yeah. would be, I would find it helpful to, to consider what, what's prompted the. Okay. I would agree. Okay. Uh, so um, the development that we're looking at is um, located almost a thousand feet um, from the Route 29 entrance corridor. In this image, uh, you can see 29 at the bottom, um, sort of the angled street. Um, and if you can see where um, the note says 1E lot 2, that um, block is the um, area in question. Uh, this is an image of the proposed site layout. These are apartment buildings, um, and it's a block in a um, uh, much larger um, development. It's the North Point development. This image shows the proposed elevations for the apartment buildings. Um, they have blue and white siding. The white is Arctic white hardy siding, and that's exactly one of the, um, the colors um, that was not approved for um, um, uh, buildings in the Brook Hill development. Um, and again, like particularly at the Brook Hill development, there were buildings, um, you may recall, there's a big wooded buffer between the street and the development. Um, <clears throat> um, and so the, the uh, white, the, the Arctic white, and I'll say like cobblestone, and maybe one or two other um, of the hardy colors on the, on the lighter side um, uh, were replaced with more muted tones. This is a view of the project area uh, from the entrance quarter. You can see the houses in the distance along the tree line. Those would be behind the apartment buildings. And so um, back to the questions. Um, is applying that criteria in this particular case appropriate? Um, do we want to define what bright white is to help apply that criterion in the future? Do we need to change the criteria um, uh, even more than that? Uh, 
Margaret, looking at this from the street, is the block we're talking about kind of over that first ridge and then to the left? Is that the? Yeah, I think so. I think it's, um, let's see if I can. I think it's back over here. Yeah, okay. And Margaret, is this looking to the west of 29 or the east heading? To the east. North, east. To the east, okay. Thank you. Well, we, <clears throat> I guess my comment would be there seems to be distance from the corridor, but not really uh, much buffer. It, it, based on this photo, it looks like you will um, see the buildings clearly, at least until other buildings are, um, and I'm assuming that's the case that more buildings are proposed for uh, closer to the corridor itself. Yeah, there would be buildings in, in this block and um, buildings uh, right along the, the corridor as well. Are there any other um, questions from members of the board? I guess, um, Margaret, uh, since the provision of this countywide certificate, have there been other cases where or, or many other cases where applicants have requested white? That is a really good question. Um, I don't recall it coming up for this type of certificate, but I did not go back and try to um, run through all the um, all the instances of the um, of this type of certificate. Um, I don't think there's been that many. Um, at all. Um. Okay. Well, I appreciate you sharing the uh, example that brought the question to mind. I think in my mind's eye, when you were describing the question initially, I was imagining, you know, small agricultural, uh, you know, sort of vernacular structures in white and could easily kind of imagine that. I think for me, I appreciate and agree with Chris's point that there, there really isn't any kind of screening um, that's likely to be in place for quite some time for these. And, um, for me, at least, the scale uh, and length of the facades and the amount of white um, supports for me the, the original requirement to stay with more muted earth term tones. Um, I appreciate your offering the alternative for a light reflectance value as a as a objective measure and uh, would certainly be open to incorporating that if others were. I agree with Dade. I think it was written this way specifically for instances like this. Um, and it's going to have a big impact on the corridor. You know, even though it's way back, it's sitting up, it's you know, massive buildings. Um, Margaret, can we get back to the elevations? And then the site plan, if you don't mind for one second. Okay. So we're really only looking at one, the, the, the facade of one building that is. Yeah, so uh, this uh, entrance quarter is actually up this direction. So it's, it's one. Oh, one I see. Yeah, so it's that, yeah. And, um, um, I think the, the buildings will sort of step up the hill a little bit. So you might see some of these, um, you know, stepping up beyond. Um, so is the question, I guess there's a question of the language. Um, is it, I guess to me, it's like, is it, is it really the light reflectance value that's the thing? Or is it somehow clarifying this? Um, I mean, because under the current language, it does feel to me like the use of bright white isn't 
the use of white is not what they're showing is not just trim and decorative elements, right? Right. So in a way, I feel like the language does kind of cover this case, unless the, the applicant is arguing that bright white is ambiguous and that this doesn't count, or um, I guess I'm just trying to wrap my head around what the, the change, right? Well, I think it's how, how that would cover things exactly. Well, I mean, I think it is a two part question. Um, uh, just trying to, to think through it as I was reviewing this um, in the past when the ARB has reviewed um, white as a color and didn't um, didn't approve the brighter or lighter whites, it was in a very different situation um, than this. Um, so that was one aspect of it. And then the other is what's bright white? <laughs> is Arctic white really bright white? Um, yeah, I don't know if we remove the word Right, and just said white. <laughs> was not... Yeah, I feel like that kind of removed the ambiguity about it. Yeah. Um, if not, I mean, I do think it would be helpful to have some light reflectance value established that makes it easier for you to just say, like, yes, this is good. No, this is not good. It needs to be, you know, this many percentage points more muted um so but i don't know where you would draw the line in in whites between bright whites and non-bright whites right yeah, i kind of i kind of feel like i'm on dates um i'm agreeing with data a little bit that the bright almost gives it too much specificity. And I, I kind of worry that using a quality like light reflectance value, like I just don't know enough about the range of possible uh, surface treatments that exists to know whether a given cut, like I, I would worry about setting a cutoff and then having it imply that values that are just below that, but would have roughly the same visual impact would be sort of okay. And I think that there's something nice about the fuzziness of just calling it white and then giving, uh, and, and so I guess this is a question for you, Mark, and staff in, in general is, would it be a better tool for you to have something just like white to fall back on and use as a way to, you know, given our sort of general understanding of white? <laughs> Rather than making it really precise and then having a bunch of stuff slip through because it's not, uh, it, it does meet that, it's just under that threshold. Why are we, why are we not talking about the blue? Because that, under this definition, the blue is not allowable either. Well, no, I think that's a good point, Frank, and I, I, I agree. Um, I think to the extent it is more color of the sky and the water and we're trying to encourage things to blend more into the land. That's uh, similarly not appropriate. Good point. Um, I think uh, it, it, it is helpful to, um, it certainly makes staff's job easier if we have a, a, a number to go by and you know above the number is not good and below the number is, is fine and that makes it quick and easy, but I can also understand that you know, assign a, a, you know, a number of 245 is not good, but 244 is, I, yeah, yeah, I get it. Well, and I'm, I'm kind of going through the Sherwin-Williams uh, catalog online, and like there are many things in their white range. Some of them are in the 80s, some of them are in the 70s. So I can understand that it, it might make sense to find a number. I, Well, I suspect the I suspect the builder doesn't wants to use a, a pre-finished hardy. Um, so there aren't many choices, right? There's either I, I, there may be one that's kind of a light gray. I can't remember what's in that spectrum, but I I think that Arctic white may be the only white white. It, it's the only white white. I think cobblestone is maybe the next the next step down. Um, the, the material samples, uh, it does say a uh, hardy Arctic white, and then the blue is a Sherwin-Williams color.
examples, just a second. So there's a, yeah, it looks like the Arctic white is really the only really white color. There's a sailcloth, which I would call an off-white. Um, I don't know. There used to be a cobblestone. Yeah. Oh, cobblestone is almost a gray in this light. Yeah, and looking online, it seems like the cobblestone would be. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm maybe the contrarian here. I I don't. I'm I'm not offended by the blue. I think the the white, unfortunately, as it appears in this drawing, really isn't white. It is more of a light gray. The page is white. So the white white feels like it's maybe not appropriate. Uh, and yet, you know, I understand what they're trying to create and it, it kind of has a fresh feel to it. And I wonder whether just given how far back this is, are we, one, sh should we consider adding, you know, muted blues to the color range? Um, just because I think it's, I'm not sure why, why we exclude it. And then two, it's 750 feet off the, off the main corridor. I don't know. I just have a hard time getting too worked up about it. I, I don't, I don't think people are going to drive by and go, oh my gosh, that's awful. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, could I ask where, how was the, that list of approved colors arrived at um, in the, in the first place? And um, cause I noticed that it doesn't include red, which, you know, theoretically would preclude a lot of like red brick yeah. colors um, if you were going to apply the strict letter of that list of colors. Um, and it seems that this comes up a lot too when we're reviewing uh, buildings that, that come before the board. Um, it seems like the list of colors is a little bit restrictive and we oftentimes end up, you know, giving applicants a pass on colors. Um, so I'm just wondering like how that list was, was arrived at. Sure. Uh, when, uh, when we were working through the criteria for each of these uh, uh, countywide certificate types, um, uh, staff would have drafted the criteria and brought them to the ARB for review. Um, I, I don't have a specific memory of this particular one. Um, uh, we probably just, you know, earth, earth tone, we're always talking about earth tones and uh, probably just listed the specific colors that came to mind. I would think, I would say red and orange would fall under the clay um, name for me. Um, um, I think there's a, early on there, there's a, history of um, seeing a lot of white in the distance from some of the primary streets in the county, um, having a lot of white on buildings, uh, making them stand out in the landscape. That was not looked at as a, a positive thing. Um, uh, and so, you know, I think white has just been one of those um, colors to be aware of. My wife sometimes says I'm colorblind, but to me, that blue, I think that could be in the gray family, maybe on one end. Um, but I, do, I, I think this will have an impact. And I'm kind of a traditionalist. I think the way it's written, you know, bright white, the bright is having bright is important. Uh, in this case, I think that white appears bright. 
you know, I don't, if you need more tools to evaluate it, we could give a number, but I, that might open up another set of issues. Yeah, I kind of agree with um, Dade's original suggestion that if you just took out the word bright, it would actually be more clear, um, not less clear, in my opinion. Yeah. And also, I guess my other thought, too, is like um, for, for projects that are asking for a staff level review, um, just in my opinion, they should not expect as much leeway as, as a, a project that's going before the board where, you know, after consideration, the board can give somebody a pass on it. But I think if, if they're submitting for a staff review, um, they should be, you know, they have the criteria and they should just be prepared for it to be a, a no brainer really. That's a great point. Yeah, I, I think that's a great one, Chris. Okay. Is so how, how do we feel about black? I think probably a, a, my preference would be that we'd limit the sort of the darkest black and the whitest white. I mean, I think I could be totally down with that charcoal type tone, but that's my first take. Yeah, I think that's a good point, Taro. Yeah, basically maybe our, our main concern is about contrast and so we don't want anything to be too dark or too light. Okay, so is black- well, That might impact some of the shingle selections that we currently- <laughs> The, the shingle that's proposed here is called charcoal. And it's, is black addressed anywhere in the in the criteria? No. And just for quick reference, if light reflectance value reemerges, it looks like James Hardy's uh, Arctic white. They represented a 77 LRV. Okay. So is there then a general consensus that um, uh, we, we would be interpreting um, this criteria, um, uh, the bright white is just means white. Um, and we want to stick with this, uh, limit the use of white to trim and decorative elements. Yeah, I think that makes it more clear um, that the whole structure, or large portions of the structure, are not supposed to be white. Okay. What do we mean? What do we mean by non-traditional muted earth tones? Yeah, that was the non-traditional through me too. Non-traditional tones or muted earth tones, is that how it's supposed to read? Or is it non-traditional and muted earth tones? Um, I I would Interpret that to mean non-traditional uh, colors that are are still muted. Um, so something that's not brown, gray, green, clay, or yellow, maybe. So if you wanted like a, a muted pink Tennessee marble, they're talking about it. <laughs> It'd be good. Okay. I, I think see. we should consider getting rid of that because I don't. I, I think it's subject to interpretation, non-traditional. Just eliminate the word non-traditional and keep the rest? I think I would support that. I, I just, I think it creates more confusion. Okay. Uh, 
so if we want to uh, revise this criterion, uh, it would be good to uh, have a motion and a vote. Um, it sounds like a change that could be made would be to eliminate the word bright and the word non-traditional from that criteria. Yeah. So where does, I guess I'm still struggling with where does what, where does white become light gray? Where, how do we determine if you, if you take out bright and you look at the Sherwin Williams pan, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you would consider to be an off white. And does that eliminate all the off white colors as well? I kind of feel like the point where you start thinking of it as an off white is the point where it starts being okay, but <laughs> I don't know how to. Well, that, yeah, I agree. But I think if you take out bright, you, know, so you open the, it again, open to interpretation, anything that you're mm. classifying as a white then becomes. I think we keep bright. Keep bright. So, and I, I don't know. The, just searching randomly for bright white, Google comes up with something of 95% LRV and then searching for off white, it comes up, uh, Benjamin Moore says it's a 75. So uh, I don't know that I'm not, I don't know that there's a, you know, something less than 75, it seems like maybe would be, if we, if we need to say something. So this, and again, I just did a Google search and I thought this one was interesting about LRV it says, um, it runs from a scale of zero to 100, zero assumed, assumed to be absolute black, 100 assumed to be perfectly reflective white. Neither of those things really exist. So approximately speaking, the average black is black has an LRV of 5% and the white is white 85%. Think, would it be helpful if we included off-white as one of the permitted colors, or is that totally throwing everything into confusion now? Um, well, you know what might help? Um, we could um, maybe using Sherwin-Williams or some other um, standard color palette, we could say, um, uh, maybe define a range of what bright white looks like and define a range of what off white looks like and you know off white being acceptable and bright white not so much. Um, that would give a range, um, doesn't limit it to a single thing, um, still allows for some flexibility. To Date's point, what have you just established a threshold? And anything above 70 or 75 is considered bright white, and anything below that is considered off white. That would work. That's that's simple. I guess I just don't feel qualified to draw the line just yet. But in principle, it seems okay. I don't know if we all want to grab a fan deck in the next uh, <laughs> next week and come back with our our LRV vote. And that would that would put the hardy Arctic white one one degree above. Yeah, I think it, it's current seventy seven on their literature. So if, if we said seventy five was the floor, it would be just barely right. And were you able to find the LRVs for the off-white ones too? I was curious about that. I like cobblestone or I think I think cobble was all the way down to 55. Okay. So I got I did not get these from the Hardy website, but um so these look like a little bit different than what um Dave, what you're finding. Cobblestone down to 52, 53.
So I'm looking at a website here where they sort of classify it by range of LRV, but they have uh, off white at 75 to 80 and bright white as 80 plus. 55 to 75 is considered light. Right. So reversing it, I mean, I guess that maybe it was Tara who made the point first of all, or Chris, okay, so, that the, uh, uh, the language is written about? since it precludes it other than as trim, effectively precludes the, the proposal. Right. And so Frank, to your point about that, if a, if a bright white starts at 80 or 85, or then the Arctic white would not be a bright white. Well, so actually toward that point, yeah, we maybe want to change it to white in terms of not having but full extensive white. It serves it. Sorry to be circling. Yeah, I just, I don't know, it, uh, 75 to 82 is off white. Yeah, everything I look at is kind of has that threshold that for off white at anything below 80 or 82. Or do you know, are they? Yeah, I agree. I think if, if I agree with um, with Dade, if you took the term bright, so it was just use of white is limited to trim and decorative elements. Um, I think if somebody's coming in with an off white that is far enough off white, they could make an argument. Well, this is not white. This is a light gray, and if it is gray enough you could say well yeah you you have a good point that's a that's a light gray that's not a white um and same with a you know a cream coming kind of from the the brown family too like you know i think if it's not white enough then you can make that argument and you know it's it's clearly not a not a white Yeah, I think that, that makes sense to me, Chris. So, so we just strike bright and then non-traditional. Margaret, Margaret had it right from the beginning. So you're saying that there is a... I mean, that, that seems reasonable to me. I agree. Again, I think without identifying some LRV, without identifying some number at which it's no longer white, I think we're at risk of being in a fuzzy zone all the time. Or not all the time, but at some point. <clears throat> I guess one of the things I'm thinking is, is um, because in one way, it seems like this project doesn't this particular instance doesn't meet the trim and decorative elements criteria. But Margaret, you had also mentioned earlier when we were looking at the project, I can't remember the name or the details, but the 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 white panel at the which was kind of a trim or a decorative element. We had all sort of gone with that being too bright along to in contrast to the greenery. Is that right? Uh, I think in that situation, it wasn't necessarily limited to trim either. I think it was as being used as a um, uh, you know, part of the wall. This is big, so bigger than trim and bigger than decorative element. Okay, so so I guess I'm just wondering if like what we're really talking about is not necessarily the brightness or the not brightness, but this question like does the does the trim and decorative elements 
clause of this give you enough to rule out the cases that we're all thinking of, I guess. Like, are we ever in situations where, I, I, I don't know, like, it, it seems like the extent is the really thing that keeps coming up in a lot of these cases, but more than the brightness, right? Meaning bright white is okay just for a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah. If, if the buildings looked exactly the way they looked in this uh, architectural rendering, and you, and, you, and you think about the color of the paper being bright white, then the building itself, you would have to say is off white. I guess my question is, would we approve it as an off-white color. Because that's essentially what we're looking at. True, so if, if this, anybody who uh, uh, applies for a countywide certificate of appropriateness, um, if, if staff isn't able to approve it, then they can appeal it to the ARB. So it would just, it would just come to you. Um, uh, for a full review um, and then you would review it against the standard guidelines um, so you wouldn't be limited well we'd have the same question though. we'd be debating the same issue right. but but you wouldn't you, you wouldn't be necessarily trying to define bright white you would just be looking at it sort of in a broader context and do these colors look okay in that location? Do they relate to traditional architecture and will it have an appropriate appearance? I don't know that I would agree that it, I mean, I, mean, I think it's, the, there's something about the exterior colors that seem different from the interior colors, because looking at the Sherman Williams families, a lot of the, a lot of the things that are at LRV 75 or so, um, on an interior finish, definitely read as off-white, but I, I kind of think that for some reason there's, to me, this, reads as more of a white, white, even though it's LRV is 76 or whatever. I don't know that we're, I don't know. And that's a good point, Tara, that what might be an off-white in an interior environment is really a white with stronger sunlight. I mean, my sense is that this is like as white as they can get basically on an exterior. Um, and I think that counts. Like, I don't think we're necessarily thinking of exterior bright white as being like anything from 80 up. It feels to me like the standards for these exterior colors is a little different. Are there any examples that are sort of in the low 70s, high 60s that feel more like exterior off-white? I'm looking now, a lot of the ones that read pretty close to what we're looking at are like down in the, are, are up in the 80s, 86. Since the, um, since the LRV for the Arctic white is sort of, close to some of those borderline um, cutoffs. Would it be um, maybe helpful if we could find a, a recently built example that uses that color and see it in place? Yeah, I think that would be helpful. All right, let me see if I can figure out if we've got a, a 
a house or a townhouse or a uh, department building that's got that's using that color. Um, if I can find that, I can let y'all know where it is, and maybe everyone can do a drive by before our next meeting. Actually, it might even have one. Mm. Let's see here. Margaret, just looking at this application in the countywide certificate of appropriateness, is there any hierarchy in the colors criteria? Because there's two entries. There's you know, earth tones, which this application doesn't meet. And then you go into the specifics on bright white. Couldn't you say it's, there's not an earth tone? according to these colors in this on this building. So. Mm -hmm. Or does it are they of equal importance? Or is one just a I, because there's two columns or um no I, I don't think one is necessarily more important than the other. I think I think what it's just saying is that the you know the the, the colors should be muted earth tones. If, if you want to use white, it's got to be limited to the trim. Which it disregarded both color requirements. It seems. Yeah, I agree, Frank. Okay. And I was focusing primarily on the white because um, because there was so much of it, and it just it's a uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a little uncomfortable um, not not having a having that hard line to say what's bright and what's not. I agree. And I, I mean, I'd be comfortable saying it doesn't meet the requirement just because they're not earth tones. Okay. I think. Um, I guess. So, I mean, uh, my, I guess my concern in this case is clearly they're, they're trying to uh, use a little bit of this kind of farmhouse vernacular where we, where, you know, which is very popular now. Right, black windows and and white siding, um, and that's clearly what they're going for. So you're not you you the idea of bright white trim in this case isn't doesn't fit because uh, you know you could put it on the eaves, but um, that's not what they're trying to create. And my fear is by eliminating or sticking with this, oh, we can only have muted colors, <clears throat> you, you, you kind of eliminate or you make it difficult to create that uh, architectural feel. And I'm not sure, I, I'm not sure that should be our job. I mean, I, I, I uh, appreciate the concerns about you know, not being too drawing too much attention to itself. Um, but on the other hand, if if our regs are really geared, you know, they don't allow for this type of design. I I think that's unfortunate. I think that's the case. I mean, I, you know, I don't think we're going to change a lot of these regulations to eliminate that. No, I, I think it's protecting the corridor and the impact on the corridor. And I think in this instance, I think Chris's point of, hey, if you, you're requesting this countywide certificate of appropriateness where you don't have to go before the board, you should meet these requirements as laid out. Um, 
if they want to come to the board and make a case for a certain architectural style or contextually, this is why this works here. You know, they have every right to do that, right, Margaret? I mean, as an applicant, I think this is an attractive option because there's less risk. So if I can just do A, B, and C, you know, and get my project approved faster. I mean, I agree with you. I don't think we want to prescribe a specific style, but I think throughout the guidelines, we have these ambiguities or these, you know, these gray areas. And I, I always get back to, I think it's, there's, we're open to architectural solutions, you know, and, and looking for the, the project to bring, you know, a specific idea and then make the case for why that works. But in this instance, it's a kind of checklist that you need to meet to get this certificate. So. I think at this point, um, this, this discussion has been very helpful. Um, what I would recommend is that, uh, let, let me see if I can find an example of the Arctic white out there um, uh, that we can uh, look at and let me talk with the applicant and um, and maybe we can um, maybe we'll be revisiting this at the next meeting. Does that sound okay? Yep. Yep, yeah, that's great. Great. Thank you all for that. All right, so the topic of the second work session is the entrance corridor design guidelines addenda for the Greenwood segment of Route 250 West. Um, Margaret and Mariah, do you have the presentation ready? Yep, I'm going to bring that up. Are you able to see that slide? Great. Okay. So uh, we're hoping today to get your comments on the content of the one pager for the Greenwood segment of the Route uh, 250 West corridor. Um, this one has two pages. Recall last time we, uh, when we met, the Acton segment just had the one, um, but this one had a lot more images, and um, the segment is longer than the Acton segment was. Um, I've already uh, identified a, a couple corrections I know that we need. Um, <clears throat> the lower right image in, on this sheet is missing a caption. And um, I think we probably want to um, um, make the, uh, the titles um, uh, or the labels on the images a little more visible. Um, uh, we've also, uh, in doing this second, second uh, segment, uh, we recognize that we need to clarify um, the pointer um, in this, the predominant landscape features section. Um, uh, we need to clarify when uh, the item that we're listing uh, isn't meant to be repeated in the future. Um, so. Um, You'll, you'll see that um, Acton segment come back to you with a few corrections um, just to help clarify that for the readers. Um, so really we're just looking for um, comments on the content, on the text, uh, and, and you know, if you've got other comments on the format as well, happy to hear those. Um, you can pull these up, whichever you'd like to look at. Um, I can stop here and, and we can talk about that or um, we can go on to, um, uh, talk about next steps again and um, survey forms and that sort of thing, whichever is your preference. All right, well, I'll just go down the list and see if anybody has any uh, questions or comments. Um, Frank Cancock? I don't, I think it looks great. Um, thank you, Mariah and Margaret. Just the two little things you mentioned, the um, labels on the images, 
maybe they're if they're white or if they're in a different location might read a little bit better but no i think it looks really good i think it, it'll be a great resource for applicants thanks uh tara Sorry, I just uh, I lost my window. Um, no, I, I, I agree with Frank. Uh, I think it looks awesome. And um, I don't have any particular questions or comments. Thanks. Uh, Frank Stoner? Yeah, same. I would echo uh, Frank and Frank's comments. Um, I think the format looks great. It's really clean, neat. Um, so thanks. Thanks to, yeah everyone who worked on it. Thanks, uh, Dade. Sure, yeah, thank you, Chris. I'll just add my voice to the chorus. Uh, thank you, Mariah, thank you, Margaret. It's uh, beautiful, uh, great format, great text, and uh, thank you for advancing it. Thanks, and um, you know, I'm gonna sound like a copycat here, but um, it, I think it looks great and um, especially this segment where there's not a whole lot of architecture to deal with this format seems to work great. Great, thank you all. Let me move on to the next then. So at our last meeting, um, we assigned the remaining corridors and um, we discussed the possibility of using a survey form uh, to do that survey work. So I emailed uh, this draft form uh, to the members who had already completed some of the corridor work um, just to see if, um, uh, if they thought it would be work workable. I didn't get any feedback on that. Um, so um, uh, I'm happy. Uh, my, apologize. My, my apologies, Margaret. Thank you for sending it. Um, I'm remiss, but I, I think it looks very good to me. Okay. Uh, I will, if that, if they think it'll work for everyone, I'll send it back out to everyone. It is sort of a fillable form, tried to come, come up with some, um, um, just a list of options, um, but to give you enough space to add in whatever, um, you know, if you have other ideas, there's, there's space to add that. You're not limited to the, the choices we've um, given you. Um, so I don't know, is there other um, questions or discussion on the survey form? I also think this looks great and that uh, looking forward to giving it a spin. Great. Okay, um, well, that looks good then. I will um, get that out to everybody. Um, and um, and then hopefully we'll have a, another one or two segments uh, for y'all to uh, review uh, for the next meeting as well. Great. I might regret saying this, but I might need a deadline. <laughs> <laughs> I can give deadlines. Frank, you're, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, let's see. Are you guys still working on inputting the ones from the previous presentations? Is that what you said you, you would have next meeting, another segment maybe? Um, yeah, let me see. Uh, let me pull up one other thing here to check. We've got uh, three other segments for the 250 West Quarter. I would love to get those done um, by the next meeting. Um, but then there are, there are also one, two, three, four, five other corridors that we already have um, the survey work done for that um, we, we still need to, um, uh, to get uh, that format done and get that to y'all. So that's going to take us a little bit. Um, so if board members, um, can be working, I would say, like over the next month or so on the next, um, on their next, next quarters, next segments, that would be helpful. Um, uh, I would say the next one, one to two months. Mariah, do you sure. have any 
any anything to add there? No, still working on getting those maps. So if you find yourself wanting one weekend in particular to go driving, just let me know so I can make sure to get you the maps before you do so. Thank you. So maybe end of the summer is our summer homework. Your summer reading. <laughs> summer reading. It's your summer vacation, Frank. That's right. <laughs> Or maybe we take it to fall break. I don't know. We can. Uh, how about uh, Mariah and I will um, take a look at it and we'll maybe we can um, for the next meeting, um, maybe project some dates by which we'd like to have those corridors done and, and um, see how shocking it is to all of you next time. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you. And we're on to other business. Um, would anybody like to move to adopt the June 6th, 2022 ARB minutes? So move. Okay, can I get a second on that? Second. All right. We'll put it to a vote. Mr. Stoner. Aye. Mr. Hancock. Aye. Mr. Mitsuno? Aye. Mr. Henningsen? Aye. Mr. Vanderwerf? Aye. Thank you. All right. Uh, the next ARB meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, July 5th, uh, 2022. And it will be a virtual meeting. Are there any uh, board members who know or suspect that they may not be able to attend that one? I will not be able to attend. All right. Um, sounds like we'll have a quorum now, um, barring any unforeseen circumstances. So uh, we'll count on doing it. Um, are there any other um, items or questions from anyone? All right, well, in that case, uh, the meeting is adjourned to the next meeting on Tuesday, July 5th. It's uh, 2.03 by my watch. Um, so have a uh, great rest of the month. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank you, Chris.